Hey. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Chris. I just wanted to drop in and do my March wrap up. I read a fair amount of books. But yeah, let's get started. So one of my favorite books in March was a surprise to me. It was Butcher and Blackbird and as well as Family Lore. I really enjoyed both of these books. I read them at the beginning of the month. Butcher and Blackbird follows the premise of two serial killers who have a chance encounter and after this chance encounter they decide to play a game where the winner gets the biggest kill. But while participating in this deadly game with one another feelings start to develop and they might and eventually do develop something where I was <sighs> y'all I loved okay I love this book, okay? <laughs> There's no just like, it's just fun. It is unhinged in the best way. It is also, it was really good in the aspect that I felt really connected to Salone. Maybe I'm just not very well versed in romance books, but I was very surprised that they depicted how some people cope with trauma and like very difficult things that they experience in their lives. And I really saw parts of myself with Salone. I really like that Brienne Weaver didn't shy away from the aspect of feeling like an unhinged, uncontrollable rage that you feel towards your abuser sometimes. And the depiction of female rage and the rage you feel towards an abuser or someone that has taken advantage of you at some point in your life is so like, it just irritates me because it's like the singular tear crying while they're like looking into the distance. And it's like, no, real people, real, life people experience this type of rage they experience these kind of ugly emotions and you kind of don't know what to do with it sometimes and it comes out in really terrible ways and i really like that i really felt seen by this book <laughs> at some points i really like that rowan is a likable male lead right he is endearing he's funny he's charming he gives you something to root for and the way that he's so brutal with his murders but so tender and caring towards alone and the people he cares about in his life is Ugh. family lord goes over this idea of generational trauma the feeling of belonging how different generations of families and women have to deal with these gifts that they have depending on how their gift is perceived by others feel less or better than is like oh. and like this this view of the relationships between mothers and their daughters and their their own daughters with their own mothers and it's just like oh. it's so good and i know that some people might not like the writing you know i think anyone that has grown up in a multi-generational household or a family that has immigrated at some point in their life has experienced a lot of the things in this story and this coming of family that regardless of the circumstances regardless of the traumas the anger the resentments the heartbreak the love the wanting to do better for one another and wanting the best for one another that at the end of the day it's about these women in this family having a connection and coming together to celebrate Laura's life oh. It's so good. I recommend it to everyone. I know not everyone might not like enjoy it, but I think this is something to check out. It is very beautifully narrated. You really get the sense that it's a family of women trying to do their best given the circumstances and the traumas that they're endearing. While I love Butcher and Blackburn, I did not like <laughs> I'm so sorry. I did not care about James in any way, in any conceivable world, but I, I don't know what it is about James. I'm just like, he's such a walking red flag and he's not charming he's not endearing he gives me nothing to root for and he's just like <sighs> and like the entire time i just wanted wendy to break up with him and like in a romance story that's not what i want i don't want my main characters to break up with each other like <sighs> but yeah i think if you're into dark romance this could be a fun read to check out maybe dark romance is just not for me and that's okay and at least now i know <laughs> at least now i know that dark romance and peter pan retellings are just not for me and that's okay i just could not stand okay it's like <laughs> i don't know i'm just like <laughs> okay yeah but yeah but yeah i think i might donate this or give it to someone in my personal life I was like, when I first, okay, when I first finished this, I wasn't even like, I was just like, oh, it was okay, it was whatever. I didn't like particularly enjoy it, but the more I think about it and the more I think about James, the more irritated and angry I get. <laughs> 
So yeah, hooked. <laughs> Sorry to get a sore throat, so I don't know if I'm getting sick again. That's so rude. Ugh. After reading Hook, I ended up reading House of Root and Ruins. Um, this is a second book in a series. I will say though, if you wanna read this book, you don't necessarily need to read House of Salt and Sorrow. I feel like this is more a companion piece instead of a direct sequel. So much time has passed in between these books and as much as aspects in the first book do affect the events in the, the second book, it is not clearly explained like it does get explained but it's not something where you're like reading and you're just like what's going on i don't understand yeah this is a gothic horror gothic romance book by aaron a craig if you're familiar with any type of gothic horror or gothic romance you kind of basically know the premise of this story you kind of know the plot points you know the kind of know like the tempo and the beats and where the story is going to go right i think overall if you are a middle grade reader and you want to get more into gothic horror gothic romance at a young adult level this is a really great book the writing is very accessible you don't get bogged down by the prose of the story or her erin craig's writing i like this a lot better than i liked small favors i think out of her three books she's released small favors is probably my least favorite this is my emotional support water bottle <laughs> so after reading hooked and house of root and ruin i kind of wanted a palette change kind of a palette cleanser um i also wanted to read manga because that is something i read a lot of so i ended up picking up the first three books of the apothecary diaries it's fun it's funny there is a general kind of intrigue overlining everything there is some type of greater conspiracy regarding our male lead in the story that is later a major focal point in the story but anyway <laughs> it is fun there is an anime if you guys want to check it out there is also a light novel that this is all based on I think personally that the manga is better than the light novel. You get to see more characters fleshed out in this story and you also, it's just like, it's like also like, <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna show for this, but whatever. It's like hilarious to see like <laughs> so the animation or the art is so funny. It's great, it's well done, I think. And then also like some of the characters in this story are just straight up trolls. They're hilarious, but it is a great plaid cleanser. It is enjoyable. I think it is a great entry into anime if you're looking into getting into manga and anime. So basically after Mau Mau has been kidnapped by human traffickers, she is sold to the inner palace um and is forced to work as a food tester for one of the high consorts for the emperor and she kind of has this thing where it's like the episode or the kind of event of the week but as an overarching thing there is a greater conspiracy going on regarding her heritage some other characters heritage their involvement with the emperor and this underlining <laughs> and hilarious like thing of her just wanting to eat poison because she just wants to figure out an antidote and i think come on dude it is great <laughs> the last two books i read for march were was front desk and the three body problem oh my <laughs> okay front desk emotionally damaged me guys it was <laughs> it was emotionally traumatizing in a way that i wasn't expecting and i think that's why i'm also kind of like Bleh lately right now we follow mia as she and her two immigrant parents move from china to california in the event to make a better life for themselves and i think oh, this is so good you really follow mia as she deals with trying to be her own person while trying to be a good daughter and helping these people and being a good friend while also trying to figure out how is she going to figure out the a way to have a better life for her and her family you know because they're oh god and then you see her while she's dealing with not only overt discrimination but also like institutionalized discrimination and trying to do her best and you know she's just trying to be a good person and be a good friend and a good daughter but she's struggling because she's also trying to do what she feels is right for herself and is like torn between two worlds like ah! 
It's so good. It's so good. I recommend it. It was also like a rehash some trauma, like like childhood trauma in my brain. So that was also like heart wrenching for me. And I had really struggled in that aspect while reading this book. But I recommend it for anyone. No, regardless if you are a middle grade reader or an adult. I was in ESL when I, even though I spoke English. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm just like, like <laughs> Wait, so she wasn't put in, like she wasn't put in ESL either, but I was put in ESL, even though I spoke English. Hey guys, it is a new day. My camera overheated and died before I could finish the last clip. <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed, okay, if you guys can't tell. But um, one of the last books I read for March was The Three Body Problem. I think, it was very interesting. I like that we're going through different times in the story. I also enjoyed the characters. I think if you are a little daunted by it, I think it's a lot more accessible than it probably seems. <sighs> How do I explain this? I think the only thing is I had a little bit of a pacing problem in this story. I'm not sure if it was just because it's a translated work that some of the pacing in the original story didn't carry over or if this is something that is prevalent in the original works and it's a quick read you get through it very quickly because there's always something going on um and you are jumping around a lot so if you aren't interested in certain aspects you do tend to jump around into a different part of the story that really that's putting things into motion and i really like that personally again for me it's just more of a pacing thing but yeah I recommend it. There's also a show, so if you wanted to read or watch the show, I do think they did some changes from the original story, which is typical of TV shows, um, TV adaptions. But yeah, it was a good time. I really enjoyed it. Um, another book I read but did not finish in March, <laughs> The Crow Prince, and I'm this so far at the point that I am at in The Crow Prince, it feels like a lot of setup. Um, obviously we are being introduced to Jude Carradine, um, all of his miserable posse. We are introduced to Oak, Mordok, and so far I'm just having a chill time. It's obviously just setting up for later in the story and I feel like with Holly Black's writing, if she's doing a series, the first book is a lot of setup and then like a lot of stuff happens in the other books or towards the end of the first book so yeah i'm looking forward to finishing that in april that'll be fun that's it guys i hope you guys enjoyed what did you guys read in april i mean march <laughs> um yeah what was your favorites in march um if you enjoyed the video please comment like and subscribe if you don't want to it's okay i'm not gonna be mad um i hope you guys enjoyed it i'll talk to you guys later bye